Gucci playing the young stars put the team on her shoulders and made it 2-1 with her first goal. And it was a beauty. Hey guys, welcome to the Rock and Hockey Show, and now to the guy who's never back checked in his life, Coach Dave Mackey. Hey there, hockey and rock and roll fans from around the globe, welcome to the Rock and Hockey Show. I'm your host, Dave Maxine. Thank you. Hey, this is a show where the hockey rocks. And the music sucks. On the show, this is where the great sport of hockey and great music unite. We're going to talk about hockey, but more importantly, youth hockey topics with a twist. From skill development to players, coaches, parents, hey, we got it covered. We're going to interview NHLers, celebrities, rock stars, maybe even a few average Joes. Dave, how about some meatloaf? Meatloaf! Why we do all that? The music is always going to be rocking from our rockin' house band to whoever shows up to jam. So let's quit wasting time. Let's get rocking. All right, today we've got a great show for you. A great friend of mine, probably the best skater I've ever played with or against. Seven-year pro, youth hockey coach, hockey dad. Now he's a skating coach as well. My good friend, Frank Latuka. Before we get into the show here, let's meet the band. We're ready to do this now. Make sure your skates are tied up, buckle up those chin straps, and let's do the rock and hockey show. It's the rock and hockey show! Rock and hockey show. <laughs> Welcome back to the rock and hockey show. We are here with Rochester native, Rochester, New York native, Frank Latuka. Hi, Frank. Hey, David. Frank, seven seven year pro, um, played in Italy, played in IHL, played in East Coast League. You're an all star. You played in the World Championships. Wow, it, fantastic career. What was your best memory of that? Oh gosh, I could go back to when I was, uh, I guess, eight years old or ten years old when a coach told me, um, "You skate like Bobby Orr." And I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> Bobby Orr, behind the net to Sanderson, to Orr! Bobby Orr! Orr to the Boston Bruins! Um, but seriously. Most players today probably don't. But uh. yeah, You're right. Uh, probably my best memory is playing in the 1992 World Championships, which was, um, you know, at the time, one of the best tournaments in the world. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on skating? You know, you as a as a young player, did you do anything in particular that that made you a great skater? Was it a gift, and was it something that you nurtured throughout your career? Um, I'll have to say it was a gift um, from day one. Let's, let's talk about you know some of the young kids that that are that may be out there watching this. If you had to tell them one thing that they needed to really work on to become a good hockey player, what would it be? I would say skating. It's not just because it's. I guess my forte, but if you can't skate, you can't keep up. Right. You have everybody's got to be able to skate. And the second thing, and I know you just asked me one, but love the game. Just love to go out there and have fun. That's that was gonna be after you got done playing. You had uh, a boy and a girl, and, and you, you were able to. You know, your son played hockey. He did. What was it like having to you know switch hats from my coach hat to my dad hat to my goal was for him to love the game, and I wanted him to be able to play men's league someday like I still do, right. and enjoy it and make lifelong friends um, and play a great sport. While he Did comes. you find it hard 
knowing how hard it is to be a professional hockey player or even play college hockey for that matter, did you find it hard to how hard to push your son and challenge him to be better or did it kind of take care of itself or one of my favorite questions I think that people ask me um, parents now that are just getting their kids into it and parents back when my son was was young um, you know in this premier program and you know, spend lots of money and lots of time and travel and um, I just to me I, I read my son and he was happy and content playing a, a little bit more mild of a brand. Not a, a, he didn't start travel till right. he was a, a Bantam in what he was doing with his friends um, and just enjoy it and play other sports and, and study hard. Um, he's a pharmacist now. And, um, and he's still playing to this day. He's playing men's league and, and it wasn't it? difficult. Um, was. So let's talk about you, you, you played then you coached, you, you coached your son, you watched him grow and develop, and now you've come full circle and you're back to coaching Mike Hockey. How awesome <laughs> is that? It is. Uh, I didn't think I'd love it like I did. So you still find it fulfilling? I did. I did. I found it fulfilling. I interject real quick. is <clears throat> You and I have a lot of similar philosophies on, on, on the sport, in sport, how to coach it, how to play it. And you know, for all the years I coached, I tried to bring that fun aspect, the long, you know, the not, not it's not a sprint, it's a marathon right. concept to it that you're trying to yep. do, and it is tough. There's a time and a place, time right? Time and a place, and, and trying to find that that line is difficult for all the coaches that are, you know, coaching at every level, serious or non. Yeah. There's there's that line and how to push and when to push and. You know, the sport needs people like you, and it needs to constantly refresh itself with uh, not only hockey players, but just people that have the right attitude, personality, the knowledge, right? the knowledge of how to succeed and love hockey for a lifetime. So that that's... Well, you should make that quote right there, because that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right, can you make a note of that one? Succeed. Yes, I got it uh, marked. <laughs> oh, you just marked that. Right? Marked hey, you're the right. best. Hey, we're going to take a quick commercial break and check out the Rockin' Hockey Glossary. <laughs> now, back to the interview. What are your thoughts on players today, young players, you know, with the, the, the talent, the skill, just what are your thoughts on them, knowing what, what you came through as a young player, watching your son come up, yep. and what players are coming into now with, it's a different game, obviously, but their equipment is different. Uh, their commitment. Commitment is level is different. You know, sports yeah. are year-round. What are your thoughts? Just general comments on that. Um, I guess I'm all about the child, the athlete, himself, herself. Um, how hard to push, when to push, like we were just talking about. Um, I guess I'm a firm believer still in playing other sports, um, taking us a, a break. Even, you know, a break nowadays is maybe getting on the ice once a week or once every two weeks in the summer. That's a break. Back in my day, <laughs> taking a break was taking a few months yeah, off. Yeah, a couple months. Um, and playing <clears throat> other sports. So, um, we could go around and around about this. I support, you know, I just hope parents can read their kids and don't push them to not love the game when they're 12, 13, 15 years old, when it really becomes important. Yep. If your child is still playing when they're an adult, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if they're playing men's league or whatever, then you've done the right thing as, as a parent if they're still playing. All the money and the time you've invested you've done the right thing, whether they ever play to the high level, they're still enjoying the sport, and it is a lifelong sport. And yeah. Frank, what do you think with skating in general, people say you got to become a better skater, what are some aspects of skating or some different technical? Uh, I, I think that's a great question. Um, you've been teaching the game for a lot of years. 100 years. 100 years on I haven't had the cake out yet. <laughs> um, and to me, hockey skating is so much stop starts it's lateral movement it's transition from backwards to forward forward to backwards that lateral 
you know, bringing speed from you're moving laterally backward to opening up to forward skate in. And I just don't think there's enough touched on that. I think there's a, a need to be able to seamlessly transition on your on your edges going forward and backward, backward and forward. Yeah, that, that's, I guess, we always want to go fast. Is there anybody in here that wants to go fast? I want to go fast. Get that man a suit. Fast. We always want to go from point A to point B as fast as we can, but... Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be nice to be able to get there in a different way. You Efficiently. Know, and as efficient as possible. And that comes in with stride, yep. things that you teach every day. And My coaches, or even instructors for that matter, that when they, they try to do transition or uh, pivoting or forward-backward stuff, changing directions, it's all just go faster, go faster, go faster. There's never I want to go fast too. Faster. There's never any correction on how to go faster and how to do it better. And in, in control. And in control and, and how to apply that in a game situation. It's great having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Frank Latuka, Rock and Hockey Show. And cut. <laughs>
stays right over top of this toe right here. Okay? Knees bent. Straight out again with your left leg. Hold it. Good. Now, the more you bend this knee, the farther that leg can stride out there. So now, now the mason's leg is, is extended here, we want to have a nice straight line right from your groin all the way to the tip of your toe. When we're striding right now, again, chest up, knee over the toe. Now this arm comes forward, this arm goes fully backwards. Okay? So we get nice long extension with both arms. Now, don't move your head and recover back to home base. Good. Now, let's switch and left leg. Ready? Go. Other arm. Good. We want to get nice long extensions. If we have nice long arms here, we're going to have nice long legs. Okay, now keep your head right there and come back to home. Good. Now do the other arm. Other leg. There you go. Good. Chest up. Good. And home. And right leg. And home. And left leg. And home. Now, again, this is an exercise you can do without even having a slide. Board. And hold it. Don't move. Okay, which leg's working harder right now? This one. Absolutely, and that's what we want. Nice strong home base leg, because that allows that leg to do its thing right there. Okay, so a good way to practice this is stride out, hold for a three count, and then go back home. Ready? Home. And stride out. One, two, three, home. Stride. One, two, three, home. Okay? Stride. And right now I got the slide board set at about six and a half feet. So what's most important here is not how far you push but getting good technique, using good technique that you can get across that board without overextending yourself and becoming off balance or out of whack and having to reset, okay? So if you need to go smaller at first, then that's fine. Get good at it, get good technique, get stronger, and then worry about pushing yourself. That way you have a good, good efficient stride, okay? All right, here we go, Kel. Get ready with your left, left leg. Left arm, full extension, and he's going to hit the end block, and you're going to, he's going to hold that full extension. Ready? Go. Good. Chest up. Longer arms. Good. Home base. And go. Good. Now, see right here, again, there's that full extension from the groin right to the tip of the toe. This leg's doing all the work. Nice full extension here. Okay. Home base. And go. Home base. And go. Good. If you notice, his head stays at the same level all the time. That means his legs are doing all the work. Chest stays up. So the weight is on the ball of his foot, a little bit more towards the front of it. All right? And he's going to help him keep balance. So when he strides, he'll be able to glide. Ready? Stride boarding is a great and simple exercise to do at home. You can do it by yourself, or you can do it with family, friends, or teammates. I would suggest each time you do the exercise, do three to four sets. In week one, sets can be one minute long with maybe a three minute break in between. Week two, progress your sets to two minutes long with a four minute break. In week three, if you're up for it, progress your sets to three minutes long with a five minute break. Thanks for watching this segment about striding on the Rock and Hockey Show. I hate you. Hey, it is news reporter Miles for Rock and Hockey News, and here we have a pro hockey player, Frank Latuka. So it sounds like you're a pretty good player. The thing is, how do you, how do you feel about winning that Riley Cup? Well, buddy, let me tell you about the Riley Cup. Um, it's in the East Coast Hockey League, and nobody thought we could win. I was playing with the Winston Salem Thunderbirds in Winston Salem, North Carolina. And well, if you, if some people thought you were going to win this cup, nope. then how many good players do you have? Maybe like. Well, we had a lot of good players, including you. Yeah, I, the biggest reason, Miles, that we won. You want to know how? Huh. We were a team. We figured out that we were a good team with good players, but we didn't play well because we didn't all play together as a team. So, so we finally figured that out. Anyways, do you even wear a cup? Oh my goodness. Let me ask you a question. You do you wear a cup? 
I, I got one more uh, question for you. No, I have This one guy over here is, um, is he alright? Because he's freaking me out a little bit. That's what I was going to say. Huh? Is That's he okay? Because I've been a little nervous during this interview with this guy. What are you looking at, you big furball? Normally this is the part where the rock and music is playing, but because this is the first show, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the rock and hockey band, uh, kind of go behind the scenes a little bit, tell you a little bit more about the music and what to expect moving forward. Right now, rock and hockey band is working very hard at uh, releasing their first song and title track for the show. Uh, so throughout the show today, you're going to see lots of clips of the band working hard, at practice sessions, uh, recording right here in the rock and hockey lair as well as in studio. Hope you love the music. Most of my songs are uh, about hockey or hockey related or inspired by hockey or my hockey experiences. So I think I'm really hoping you enjoy the music. Uh, I think it's it's unique and it, it really helps support the show. <laughs> Really looking forward to other artists, bands, and rock stars coming on, and making a rock and hockey show truly a rock and hockey show. Can't wait. All right, pump your fist. <laughs> I leave it all on the line. See you rock it all the way to the front of the stage. Oh, yeah. Woo! Rock em. Sock em. I'm gonna tell you, back in the day, I thought you were absolutely. Fancy, you were fancy oh, man. I had flow. Oh, what was I? You had. You were a fancy man. Yeah, should have seen my flow, but I'm gonna tell you something now. It was nothing like yours. Oh, oh. With that flow, buddy, you're going places. Flow helps the game flow. <laughs> are coming up and I want to do good so that told me to go old school and train. So you're chopping wood? Yeah, I got the flannels on, I got the boots on, I'm ready to go. Kelly, if only you could grow a beard, you would be old school and ready for the playoffs. Sorry, what? Thanks for watching the Rock and Hockey Show. Hopefully, everybody on the planet that loves hockey and rock and roll tunes in. I'm Rob Ray. I'm Robert Ray. And you're watching Rock and Hockey Show.